Welcome to RTN Member Voices. I'm Robert Furpo Capiello, Editor-in-Chief at Hospitality Technology. My guest is Ram Krupp, CEO and founder of OneDine. Ram, welcome to RTN Member Voices. Thank you. It's for having me. I want to give you a minute to introduce yourself to our hospitality technology and restaurant technology network audience. Tell us uh, who you are, what you do, and what OneDine does. Sure. So I'm a 26-year veteran now in uh, restaurant technology, so pretty much built a career in the space. One that specifically was created to help uh, all the advancements around commerce and unification of commerce. So we specialize in bringing together all the channels of revenue the restaurants can generate from on-premise, near-premise, off-premise into a single cohesive uh, commerce. Region. And we also specialize in the, the checkout uh, flow of casual dining and beyond. Cool, and it's uh, that that kind of solution has never been has never been hotter from from the point of view of me as a journalist and what, what we're covering. I know our audience would like to hear your thoughts on some of the challenges facing the restaurant industry at the moment, and maybe more importantly, uh, some opportunities uh, for for growth or, uh, or 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 revenue. Sometimes the challenges and the opportunity are the same thing. Uh, we'd love to hear your thoughts on that. Yeah, I mean, the challenges all come from the, the fact that we need to learn how to be more agile, right? If you had agility in the business model, the labor, the product mix, the commerce, then you can overcome challenges. The challenge is obviously abroad. You know, we've got labor issues, uh, supply chain issues. We've got a lot of hands in the cookie jar right now when it comes to our, our revenue and everybody's trying to get a piece of our revenue through channels. So, you know, those are the challenges we're going to continue having. They're not necessarily pandemic-related challenges. We've had them before, right? And then pandemic showed that we have to learn how to be even more agile. But now we've been post-pandemic, and we're still seeing issues with supply chain. We're still seeing issues with labor. We're still seeing issues with commerce. So it's time for us to kind of learn as an industry that these challenges are always going to be around, and we have to build our business around being nimble and agile. How do you hire and retain better? How do you have a, a menu offering that can be adjusted quickly to supply chain? And to some respect, how do you streamline a bit your menu to prevent some of those issues as well? And then how do you accommodate all the needs that customers have around buying products from you wherever they might be? So, you know, the challenges are, have been there for a while. They're not really changing, but the need to be agile as a brand is becoming more and more apparent. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and how can... Um... And how can technology help with all those, you know, specifically one dine or more generally uh, technology applied to the restaurant space can, uh, how, how can it best address challenges such as labor supply chain and, and, um, and channels? Yeah, well, we focus specifically on the commerce side, but in the labor side, obviously better ways to recruit. I've seen strides with brands are doing text recruiting, really simple to apply for jobs. Um, I've seen technologies that come around the kind of gig economy of staffing where it fits. Um, so really, there's, there's tools for laborers and, and supply chain. We specifically focus more on the commerce side. If you've got a need to open a new commerce channel, let's say there's a, a new company moving across the street and you want to create a one-to-one -one direct channel for commerce, today those projects could be very complex. But what if you could be in a position as a brand, you can build a new commerce channels in minutes and execute it. So that's what we help, the, the ability to quickly expand your business to different revenue channels. And um, obviously there's stuff that also helps labor with that. I mean, if you look, for example, we do an in on-premise. If we can help turn tables faster, if we can have more customers participate in your uh, marketing and engagement, you know, you can reduce your staffing costs. You know, staff sometimes takes a lot of time to do things like payments and loyalty enrollments and loyalty redemption. If we shift all that effort to the customer's hands and we free up staffing, then obviously staffs can be more efficient as well. So technology helps wherever. It might not be obvious that you're helping labor with a checkout technology, but you are actually helping labor with checkout technology. So there's efficiencies to be found everywhere. And I don't think we need to find huge efficiencies. Like we're not, the gap between where we are, where we should be is not 40 points. The gap between where we are, where we should be might be five points. So little things can help create those efficiencies in labor. Mm -hmm. And what what when you when you were describing table service and payments and uh, streamlining it reminded me of a 
the question I'm, I'm interested in, in, in your opinion of, you know, so often restaurant technology is, is focused on quick, quick service. Um, but what, what you're talking about full service and in some cases, fine dining, which, you know, is we're getting, we're seeing a lot of press right now asking, can fine dining survive? And I, of course, I think the answer is yes. Um, love to hear your thoughts about how technology can, uh, can uh, support support the, the, the fine dining and, and full service process? Yeah, I think if you look at checkout in general, right? Um, everywhere you go, be a hotel, be grocery store, be counter service, the checkout part of it is a new, right? It's a, a, a team member will ring you up, but you have to check out. That checkout is not just payment. That checkout is, you know, your marketing, your email, your subscriptions or your loyalties. It's maybe a feedback loop about how is your experience. So if you look at the, at the table service, casual dining and fine dining, when I ask for a check, at that moment on, if my experience was an eight, it's going to be an eight. It's not going to become a nine or a 10. But if the checkout experience is not good, it can become a seven. It can become a six, right? So that's a key moment because when I'm ready to leave, the quicker I can leave, the better. Now, not everybody's ready to pay on their phone, but everybody, wherever they go, is ready to check out on their own, right? So... The ability to move that checkout process to the guests, A, speeds up payroll burn, and B, decreases the labor necessary from the team members because now they're not dealing with split checks, they're not dealing with going back and forth from POS stations. So there's a lot of help that can be done in just shifting that checkout process, where, by the way, everywhere else in the world has shifted to the guests in, in also fine dining. But anecdotally, I, I just came back from my European trip and over there, I feel like it's a uh, debt collection. You know, they show up with a credit card machine, they stand there like this and waiting for you to pay. Um, I don't like that atmosphere, right? There's a balance between putting a device in your face and saying, tip me, mm -hmm. and dropping up a digital guest presenter that allows you to check out, right? Mm -hmm. Just anecdotally, something I experienced. So we have in the US this opportunity to really create a really nice guest checkout that takes all the vision of what marketing wants to do with the guests and all the efficiencies operation wants to get from table turns and not affect the quality of service because checkout is just something that is very technical and can only make the experience worse. So I think fine dining and casual dining need to realize that it's coming for many, many reasons and being ahead of it has a lot of efficiencies for the brand. And that's an area that technology can help uh, mm -hmm. in that space. I, I love that, and the notion that it's a differentiator. At the, it's it's a, at the end of the process, but a but a critical differentiator. Really, a really yeah. cool thoughts. I want to give you uh, the last word with our uh, hospitality technology and restaurant technology network audience. Is there a thought you'd like to leave them with? Yeah, in general, I think kind of wrapping what we talked about. You know, obviously, I love this space. That's why I've been in this space for twenty six years. And I think restaurants need to be open to experiment always. You always want to be ahead of where we are today. So we're very often falling into a trap of just finding solutions and employing solutions to solve the problems we're already encountering, which mean encountering, which means yesterday's problems. We need to be more R and D focused a bit in the industry and look at five, 10, 15 years into the future and be ready because what what COVID has proven to us is the technology that was implemented during COVID was there available, but most companies didn't have it in place because it might have not hit the radar yet. But if you were R&Ding into the future, you would have had a lab with things like QR payments and QR ordering to be implemented right away. So what I, what I, my final thoughts and my wish to the industry is to be a bit more proactive towards where we're going and start testing solutions towards the future, not just the past. I love it. Ram Krupp, CEO and founder of OneDine, is as always a pleasure and as always inspiring and informative. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you.